Hey guys, what's going on? Happy Friday to everyone. Now today I wanted to get a little bit more personal and I wanted to share a little bit about myself, my journey as an entrepreneur over the years um, that started actually uh, in university and the things that I've done over the years. So um, one thing I can tell you that uh, you got to have that entrepreneur spirit. You got to know that um, nine to five job is not for you and you want to get a better life and you are going to go through struggles. You are going to go through some hardships, some financial issues, all kinds of stuff in order to make it work. But you got to believe in the dream. You got to believe in the end product. You got to know where your journey is going to end or where your journey is going to lead. So uh, when I started out, um, I went to the University of Western Ontario, did visual arts, fine arts and minor in business. And when I was there, I started a company with a friend of mine, Mo, um, called Tamos Canvas Building. So what we did is, since I was in fine arts, and uh, a lot of people used to buy their supplies from uh, art stores. So what we started doing is, is like, okay, this is an opportunity for us maybe to build some canvases for people that they need for paintings and uh, try to sell it. Uh, since we had access to the wood shop, we uh, struck a deal with our school that will pay a certain amount for the supplies or for the tools to use. And uh, we started this business. Yeah, we were building like eight by six, eight by eight canvases, big, big, big canvases. And we would sell this at a really good profit. So that was actually the start of this entrepreneurship. It really allowed me to think a little bit outside of the box, get out of my comfort zone, manage my time. Uh, with my studies, my school, and also the business we were trying to build. I think my Facebook page is still up. Um, I never really deleted that one. Um, it lasted for about three years, and uh, when we were out of school, when we finished school, um, we did not continue just because we didn't have the um, kind of target market that we wanted. Uh, when we were in the program, everybody used to buy from us, and we would sell like a canvas that was like let's say 36 by 48 we would sell it for like $60 and uh, $10 would be our cost uh, labor would be another $20 so it'll take us maybe like an, an hour and this is like I'm talking about 2006 7 so uh, and then the rest was pure profit for us and it was good money for our students and that really allowed us to open our mind into the possibilities of building our own business so we started that, but three years once we were out of school, like the demand was not there for it anymore. And we saw how niche of a market it was. And we learned that, right? Because once it ended, I'm like, okay, uh, we're not going to be able to use the facility. So we have to have our own facility, which is going to be overhead. Um, it's not going to be that feasible anymore. So we stopped that business and I started uh, my paintings. Um, and I, I, I still paint, but I used to do a lot more paintings. I did landscapes, portraits, um, uh, all kinds of stuff, abstract, spray painting, wood burning, what have you. Um, started a company called Arta Mondial, which means art world um, in, uh, in Latin. So started that with a friend of mine. He was doing more of the management part and I was doing the actual product because I was the artist. Um, and we started selling paintings on eBay. And um, we started generating some good business. The only issue was that that it was such a niche market that not everybody wanted an original painting. Um, and um, it, it was a bit harder to uh, find customers. And um, actually, the time it takes to do a painting is not the same as any other product you can do. So you cannot really sell on volume. So that business was, uh, it was good actually. It ran for a few years. I recently took down the website about three years ago. It was stagnant, but um, yeah, I mean, we started selling from our website as well. We had a good run with it, uh, but it's just like selling out of Canada and trying to sell it to the United States or different areas was a bit harder. The market is niche, um, but that taught us a really, really life, important life lesson in business as well that if you really want to build a big business, yes, it's good to have products you're passionate about, right? But you also have to do products that is a need and not a luxury. And in our case, when we were doing the paintings and also the canvases, it was more of a luxury than a need. Like, I mean, maybe the canvas at that time was a bit of a need because they needed the canvases, but our Art is a luxury, right? Like not everybody is gonna spend their money if they don't have uh, disposable income on art, right? So 
Um, we learned a really important lesson and uh, that helped me to branch into Amazon. So um, eBay was big back then and I'm talking about 2010-11 and um, that made me think, okay, what about Amazon? What can I do with Amazon? Because that's going to be, and I kind of saw how big it was going to get. Like that was the time that um, it was about to explode and it was a perfect time to get into it. And when I see it today, even today is a perfect time to get into it because there's so much research and development happening uh, with the shipping industry that it's going to grow. It's going to be like, um, I mean, they're already thinking about drone dropping, drone um, the shipping models and all that kind of stuff. So think about it, how crazy it's going to get. And the fact that 80% of searches um, or product, uh, products are bought online as opposed to a retail store. So that goes to show you what can you do. The second life lesson that I learned, which was very important, was client satisfaction. I mean, I cannot stress this enough. I mean, um, Canada and US are known for this. I mean, it's a service industry. No matter what you do, you cannot forget your customers. You cannot, uh, I cannot stress this enough, uh, period. I mean, that was an amazing learning experience for me because I started interacting with my customers. I would follow up with them. I would try to like almost become friends with them, but like it's part of networking, right? So almost um, they trust you. You got to build a trusted advisor kind of vibe with them. And that's when customers start to really feel that, okay, what makes you different from these other providers that, yeah, I can buy a t-shirt or I can buy a painting or a canvas from anybody else or anywhere else. I mean, um, when we were doing the canvas, uh, our competitor, which was basically the supply store, sometimes had sales that was half of our price. But we had that relationship with all of them. They knew that they can choose the kind of wood they want for their canvas. They can choose the kind of fabric they want for their canvas. So that allowed us to customize it and actually build a relationship with them talk to them about it, get their ideas, and then execute basically what they really wanted. And that's what I mean by that, is it really allowed us to connect with our customers. And I cannot stress this enough, you really have to connect with your customers, whether it be by email, whether it be by um, an automatic message that you can send, or even a phone call. If your business is small, uh, we even did phone calls. I mean, when, when I was to selling products, Part of the reason also I did it was because some of my customers were uh, in the US, uh, different provinces in Canada, so I really wanted to make sure that I'm sending it to a customer who's serious about this um, and um, wanted to get their idea of what kind of painting they wanted. Some actually wanted customized paintings. They wanted the landscape of this uh, house that they grew up in, right? So there was a sentimental value to that. So really getting to know your customers helps you to customize the product towards them, also build a relationship and create an environment for upselling or selling more products that you have. So on Amazon, if you're selling one product right now and you're gonna expand into second product, all these contacts will be on your list so you can promote to them. And you can do an e-blast to tell them, hey, I'm launching my second product. If you guys are in need of this type of product, um, I'm, uh, I have this now, so, now that they have a trusted um, vision with you, they are going to go with you. So client satisfaction is very important and uh, networking is absolutely crucial in entrepreneurship. So that started my Amazon journey and uh, I started selling different products. And uh, the f one of the first products that I sold was copies of my painting. So I knew that um, I'm a one person. I cannot do originals all the time. It takes a lot of time. A painting could take a full week. Um, it could be a, a grueling, um, what do you call, experience. Uh, although I enjoy it a lot, but sometimes it can be frustrating. So I said, you know what? Uh, why don't I start selling prints and selling prints for like $20, $30 um, plus shipping and all that. That's what I started selling on Amazon. It was my original product. and. Um, it did well for a while and then I started expanding into different things. I started expanding into um, these light bulbs that were actually security cameras. That was my second product I started selling. So it allowed me to really expand my boundaries. And now um, what I always focus on products that are not so much of a niche but a need. Um, if there is more need, you can sell it on a grander scale. Um, it's not going to be too specific to a uh, market or to a segment. Um, so 
yeah, I mean, it's been a, an amazing journey. And now, um, since I'm, I still have that visual arts kind of like uh, feel, and part of the reason I started this YouTube channel is because I enjoy the, um, the enjoy the creative part of things. So uh, this allows me to kind of get back into that realm and uh, not only do my Amazon, but also help you guys. And uh, it really makes me happy to start this creative process um, uh, with you guys. So, and at the same time, help you guys as much as I can. So that's it about me and uh, I would love to hear your comments. If you have gone through similar struggles, similar entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship ventures, share it with me. I would love to talk to some of you guys. Like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. If you have, I really appreciate your viewership. And thanks again and I'm gonna see you guys on my next live stream, but uh, my next video will be on Monday, so I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.